Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We are going to finish chapter 6 by learning lesson 35, Lichatlias Principles. After we have stated what is Lichatlias Principles, we need to explain the effect of the following factors on the system equilibrium. Concentration, pressure and volume, temperature and catalyst. How do they affect the reversible reactions? The Lee Chartley's principles state that if a system at equilibrium is given change of pressure or temperature or the number of mole of any component, there will be a tendency for a net reaction to go to the direction that reduces the effect of the change. The four factors that will affect an equilibrium position is temperature, concentration, pressure and volume, and catalyst. The first factor is temperature. Usually, when we increase the temperature of a reaction, the reaction will speed up. But that actually depends on the enthalpy of reaction, whether it is exothermic or endothermic. Changing the temperature of a system at equilibrium will change the energy content of both reactants and products. There are two types of reaction. Endothermic are reactions that absorb heat from the surrounding, but exothermic gives off heat to the surrounding. Let's look at an example of an endothermic reaction where we can see here is the dissociation of the phosphorus pentachloride. The system is absorbing heat and if it's forward, the temperature of the molecules is increased. The equilibrium will shift from left to right. More products are going to be formed. The Kc and Kp will be increased. Let's write the answer for your example 6.14. What happens to the equilibrium shift when the temperature is increased and decreased? So the first thing that we need to do is look at the delta H. The enthalpy is positive, so it is endothermic reaction. When we increase the temperature, the system will shift from left to right to produce more products. But when the temperature decreases, the system will shift from right to left, making more reactants are being formed. The second part is for exothermic reaction, whereby we can see here this is the reaction to produce ammonia. It is an exothermic reaction because the delta H is negative. For forward reaction, the system will release heat to the surrounding, so the temperature of the molecules will be decreased. Therefore, the equilibrium will shift from left to right, more products are going to be formed, and Kc and Kp is increased. In example 6.15, for the same reaction, you need to predict the equilibrium shift when the temperature is increased and decreased. Since the system is exothermic, delta H negative, the temperature, when it increases, will make the system shift from right to left, making more reactants are formed. But when we decrease the temperature, the system will shift from left to right, making more products. In short, it's easier for you to remember just one type, for example, endothermic, the delta H is positive. If you want to increase the temperature of the reaction, the equilibrium will shift to the right to produce more products for forward reaction. And when we decrease the temperature, the reactant will be produced because the equilibrium will shift to the left. So if you remember one for endothermic, you would know that exothermic would be the other way around. Example 6.16 for non-exothermic and non-endothermic system such as hydrolysis of ester, the change of temperature will not change the equilibrium position. The second factor is concentration. Here, it's straightforward whereby 
if we increase the concentration of the reactant, the equilibrium will move towards the product formation, right? Because now the rate of the forward reaction is increased. And the other way around, if we increase the concentration of product, the equilibrium will shift to the left to make more reactants. Now, what happens if we remove some reactant? The equilibrium will shift to the left because it wants to make the concentration balance. The forward reaction now is slowed down. And if we remove certain concentration of a product as well, the equilibrium will move towards the product formation to the right because the reverse reaction is now slowed and the forward reaction is now favoured. Let's look at example 6.17, the synthesis of hydrogen iodide gas. By referring to the reaction above, state the equilibrium shift when the concentration of hydrogen increase. Hydrogen gas is the reactant, so when we increase the reactant, the product will increase too. So the equilibrium will shift to the right. B, concentration of I2, decrease. When we decrease the reactant, the equilibrium will shift to the left because we want to increase the concentration of the reactant. C. When the concentration of HI product increased, when the concentration of product increased, the reaction will shift to the left because we want to produce more reactant. And D. Concentration of HI in decrease. Okay, we are going to move the reaction to the right because we want to produce more product. Oh, la, this is the answers. H2 is a reactant. When concentration of reactant increase, reactant need to be changed to product. System will move to the right. For B, I2 is also a reactant. When we decrease the reactant, the product is greater. The system will shift to the left. What happens if we increase the product? The concentration of the product need to be lowered so we need to produce reactant the system will shift to the left what if we re remove the uh, product at d when we remove the product uh, reactant now we want to be uh, to turn into product so the system will shift to the right the third factor, pressure and volume, is a bit tricky because we need to know the number of mole of gas, whether um, it's larger for reactant or for the product. So the change in pressure is significant only on equilibrium system with gases components. Pressure will change in three ways by changing the concentration of the gas, by adding an inert gas, and by changing the volume. For this situation, when the number of mole of reactant is bigger than the product, if we want to increase the pressure, the system will try to counteract the change, right? So, increasing the pressure will decrease the volume so it would go to the side where the volume is lower so if um, we have two mole of gas a being removed from the system for every mole of b formed this will decrease the total volume of the system so the equilibrium will shift to the right uh, increasing the pressure will make the system shifting to the lower volume 
the lower volume is the product because it has only one mole compared to reactant, two mole. Here, for the reaction of decomposition of dinitrogen tetraoxide, if we increase the pressure, it will cause more collision to take place and the reaction will move to the direction where the volume will decrease, which is to the left. We can see that the reactant has only one mole and the product has two mole. So the equilibrium here will shift from right to left. What happens if we decrease the pressure for this same reaction? Now, the equilibrium will move to the increased mole of volume. So, the equilibrium will shift to the right. Basically, we can divide the reaction into two. The first one is 2A becoming B. The second one is when A becoming 2B. Look at the number of moles there. It's different. And if we want to increase the pressure, the volume would be decreased. So for both of this reaction, it will move to the part where the volume or the number of mole of the uh, species is smaller. For the first type, 2A becoming B, it will shift to the right because B has only one mole. And for the second type, A becoming 2B, it will shift to the left because A has only one mole here. Now let's do example 6.18. For the equation below, predict the equilibrium shift when pressure is increased and decreased. Explain. Now, we need to determine the type of reaction here. The number of mole of the reactant is 1 plus 3, meaning 4. 4 against 2 mole for the product. So when the pressure increases, the volume decreases, it will take place to the reaction that decreases the total number of mole whereby it is going to the right because it's only 2 mole compared to 4 moles. And again, when pressure decreases, volume is increased, the reaction will take place to the direction that will increase the total number of mole. So the reaction will turn from right to left because on the left there is 4 mole more than the right. For pressure changes, this will take place only when we have a different number of gas molecules on each side of the reaction. The pressure changes are irrelevant if there is no gas molecules in the reaction and when the number of mole of the reactant is the same with the number of mole of gas. Here, there is no change in equilibrium position for the formation of the hydrogen iodide gas. The fourth factor that will affect the equilibrium position is catalyst. What is catalyst? Catalyst provides an easier path for the forward and reverse reaction by increasing the rate of reaction. So it's going to be faster, but it's not going to shift the position to the right or to the left. If a catalyst needed, the system will use it to achieve equilibrium faster. Wow, so we have done chapter 6. I hope you would be able to understand what is uh, Lee Chautelier's principle and explain the effect of the factors of concentration, pressure and volume, temperature and catalyst on the equilibrium position of certain reversible reactions?
باي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ومغفرة وردوانه إلى يوم الآخر